but the new chapter right around the corner it's time to take a look at some fantastic fan created concepts on what potentially the new chapter could look like kings and queens welcome back to the channel i hope you're all having a fantastic day let's jump on in to some of these fantastic concepts that the community has created for the potential front runners of the characters to come into death by daylight don't forget we are live on twitch right now twitch.tv slash the king hope to see you guys there we're gonna be live all weekdays at 12 30 p.m eastern standard time all right let's jump on into it all right so here we have a concept for the predator Predator by far is the front runner. I mean, there's no if or buts about it. Everybody thinks that this is going to be the next chapter. So let's go ahead and see what this concept is about. Starting off with the power, it is called Smart Disc. Hold the power button to wind up a smart disc. Release the power button to throw the smart disc in the direction you're looking. You start the trial with five smart disc. When you are out of smart disc, Hold the power button for five seconds to reload. Smart disc puts survivors into the injured state and applies the deep wound status effect, but cannot put players into the dying state. Smart discs are not affected by gravity. So that is quite interesting. So similarly to the Huntress where you have your windup of your hatchets. However, this will go on indefinitely. There is no arc with it. Uh, so this will forever just go in one direction as long as it doesn't hit anything, which is pretty cool, honestly. So another range type of killer seems quite nice. There's also a special ability, and this one is called the Predator Drone. Press and hold the active ability button to send up, to send up a Predator Drone to circle the area around you. The Predator Drone will slowly circle around the edges of your terror radius revealing the aura of any survivor within 8 meters of the drone. The Predator drone will remain active for 40 seconds, completing a rotation every 10 seconds and has a cooldown of 60 seconds. Wow, so this one is uh, pretty good as well. It's like the Skull Merchant, but really amped up. Essentially, if anybody is in your terror radius while this drone is up, you're going to know where they're at. There's no hiding, essentially, uh, if this is really close to you and i'm sure if you use perks to affect your terror radius as well this can be really really unstoppable uh obviously these aren't really balanced for regular gameplay scenarios but honestly seems pretty cool i like it you have your standard 32 meter uh, radius as well which are 4.6 meters per second so overall this is a pretty interesting concept and i like the power so far we also have some ultra add-ons here we have the plasma caster and the thermo vision the plasma caster you use the power button to fire a projectile that can injure and put a survivor into the dying state the projectile does not apply deep wounds so that's if you really want to go ham with it and the thermo vision hold the active ability button to reveal the auras of all survivors within a 16 meter radius so basically, instead of having your drones, you'll just know where everybody's at. Uh, let's take a look at these awesome perks that we have here. We have the Hunt Begins. Scratch marks stick out around 30, 40, 50% longer. So uh, this is kind of like the Predator perk itself. It also says when walking on scratch marks and not in chase, you gain a 5% boost to movement speed. Wow. So that one's pretty good, actually. Not only would you be able to see scratch marks, but your tracking abilities will just be on it. That sounds really good. The next one is called the Perfect Prey. You become obsessed with one survivor. Every time you hit your obsession twice with a basic attack, gain a token to a maximum of five tokens. For each token, the amount of time it takes you to get to the next tier of Bloodlust is decreased by a certain percentage, three, four, or five. All right. That one's okay. They definitely can use some changes to that one. Maybe some more buffed up numbers could make it go really, really good. But overall, I like the concept of it. And finally, we have Hex Decoy. All Hex Totems are affected by Hex Decoy. If a survivor cleanses a Hex, that is not that one. This Hex is cleansed instead, switching places with the other Hex Totem, saving the other Hex. So we already have this in Dead by Daylight. Obviously, this concept is a little bit older, but we still get the idea it also says if a survivor cleanses this hex that survivor becomes your new obsession and becomes exposed for 30 seconds and their aura is revealed to you for 10 seconds so they were on the right path with this one we eventually got that perk in the game so it seems pretty good not with the extra stipulations but overall this is a nice and fun concept i really like it 
Well done. Well done. Um, if we had to give this on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give them an 8 out of 10. This was a pretty solid concept, and I definitely could see something like this coming in as a power if we were to get Predator in the game. So definitely one of the front runners when it comes down to the uh, community chapters, essentially. And we'll see what ends up happening in the future. All right, next on the list is a FNAF concept. Again, shout out to the creators. Links will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. The power is Hypno Illusion Disc. All right, let's see what this entails. It says a quarter size disc can mislead many, and Afton Robotics did just that. Their Hypno Illusion Disc create fake noise to lure in the target. So we have the Hypno Illusion Disc. A hypno illusion disc creates a fake noise around certain objects. When a survivor does an action with the disc on it, you will be notified. When found, a survivor has a choice to break the disc. When it is broken, you will be notified as well. When placed on the generator, it will play the opposite noise of its current progress. In addition, it will make the noise of a generator being repaired by a survivor. On a dull totem, it will create a noise for a hex totem. Near a hex totem, it will cut the noise coming from it. <laughs> With boat lockers and chests, it will create a fake 32 meter terror radius around the chest or locker. The survivor has to be within 32 meters of the disc for it to activate the sound manipulation. To place the Hypno Illusion disc, you press and hold your power up button to place it on a generator, dull totem, hex totem, locker, or chest, and to regain it, once a survivor breaks it, it will be brought back within 5 seconds of being broken, and you can hold up to 4 illusion discs. Alright, this is a quite unique concept. I really like this one. Uh, so essentially, it does the opposite of everything. You can place this on a generator, and you can literally hear the amount of progress that's on a generator, just in reverse. Um, and it can trick survivors into making them think that you're around next to lockers or chests. There's some perks that work like this, but nothing that's actually a power set in stone. This is a, another cool concept that really looks pretty solid. I, I really like it. It is so unique. I haven't seen anything like this before. And honestly, it looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, perks as well. The first one is Hex Faulty Wiring. When faulty wiring is active, all usage speeds of items are decreased by 8% and charges are reduced by 25%. Okay, so it's a hex that basically makes it so that if you're using any items, chances are you're not going to get some good value out of it. So this is kind of like overwhelming presence, except it's for a hex. It's pretty good. I can see it working on certain builds like you could use overwhelming presence with faulty wiring and maybe even um, Franklin's demise to just really say screw all the items. So I can see that working in certain builds, not necessarily a solid perk to use in your games, but overall could be quite nice. The next one is called Got You. When your obsession is in your terror radius, they will be put into the undetectable status effect for 40 seconds. You can only be obsessed with one survivor at a time. Okay, so this one's pretty solid. Anytime your obsession goes in your terror radius, they're just oblivious. So that works out quite well, actually, because there's certain perks that you can use to get some information to know if someone is around you. And with this perk, they won't even know that you're there themselves. So this perk can work quite well in game, and I can definitely see some good builds going on with this one. The final one is called Spring Locked. When a survivor fails a skill check when healing or repairing a generator, that action will be halted. When a survivor fails a skill check when repairing a generator, the entity will block the generator for 30 seconds. The aura of the generator will be shown for the duration that is blocked. When a survivor fails a skill check when healing themselves or another survivor, the survivor being healed will be inflicted with a broken status effect for 30 seconds. Their aura will be shown for 5 seconds and they have failed the skill check. This can tr be triggered every 60 seconds. Okay, so this is kind of like Deadlock if I'm not mistaken. A similar concept, but this also works with healing. So overall, that's pretty solid. Uh, again, this is an older concept, so some of the ideas, we now have perks of those concepts in the game, but I like this one. I think it's pretty solid, especially with the healing aspect of this, giving someone else broken if you miss a skill check. I really like the idea of penalizing survivors if they 
accidentally screw something up overall this chapter is pretty solid as well i'm gonna have to give it a seven out of ten um job well done again take a look at the creators down in the description finally we have a concept for jason i'm pretty sure this is our first ever jason concept so this is kind of awesome all right here we go we have the power of Voorhees rage press and hold the power button to enter Voorhees rage the slasher will then slow down to 4.0 meters per second but within three seconds he will steadily accelerate to 5.0 during this time, the slasher will walk through doors, pallets without slowing down, and is immune to being stunned. However, his turning speed is reduced during this time. Subsequently, if any survivor escapes you during the trace during the game, you gain the trauma token. Once you have reached 13 trauma tokens accumulatively between all four survivors, everyone becomes exposed and blinded for 60 seconds. So this is just your brute force type of killer i like the idea and the concept behind it because i think if we were to get jason at any point in the game it will be this brute force kind of killer that walks through pallets walks through vaults and it's just like the ultimate machine that keeps coming after you so i think this concept is very lore accurate and it looks pretty solid let's take a look at some of the perks that we have here the first one is called he's back after being stunned by a flashlight or pallet for the third, second, or first time, you gain 6% haste bonus for 10 seconds. Being stunned again or destroying an object resets the timer. He's back has a cooldown of 60 seconds. So I like this one. Anytime you're stunned, you get a little bit of a movement speed boost. Uh, anytime your flashlight's stunned, you also get this. Again, there needs to be some tweaks to some of these perks, but getting that 6% haste sounds quite nice. The next one is Hex Death Curse. While Hex Death Curse is active, survivors who exit the killer's shack are afflicted with the exposed status effect for 60 seconds. If the map does not have a killer shack, the same effect is applied to any survivor that leaves the basement. The Hex pre-exists so long as the totem is standing. Okay, so this is a unique one. It has an area of where the survivors leave. I think this one is good, but it does need some tweaks because if someone figures out that oh if you go into the basement well it's really really rare to happen uh in most games but if you go into the killer shack for example uh people will realize oh, okay we need to avoid the killer shack until we find this totem itself it's a unique one though putting a certain area i think it could be nicer if they decided to do it around the hex perk itself so if you go into the hex you then become exposed but nonetheless a unique one and i like it the last one is called mama's boy for Every first hook you gain on the survivor, you gain a token. Within each token you receive, you earn an extra 1, 2, and 3 seconds to all aura reading abilities. However, you lose a token if a survivor is killed. So you can basically get some better aura reading, which is not too shabby overall. I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. I think the power was good. I think some of the perks were just okay. Nice chapter though overall. And that's a little bit of a look of the few concepts of what we potentially could see coming out in the future for Dead by Daylight. Potentially getting the new chapter revealed to us tomorrow, fingers crossed that it is. This is setting up to be pretty huge. If we do figure out who it is, we'll make another one of these videos going through tons of concepts for that specific character. But that is pretty much going to do it for me. Make sure you give some love to the content creators of all these concepts down below. And don't forget, we are live on Twitch right now. We're going to play about two, three hours of Dead by Daylight and should be some good fun. Hopefully we see you guys there. But that's going to do it for me. As always, I'm the king. I did my crown to you guys and we'll see you in the fog.